Hi, I'm Macy, and today I'll be sharing what's on my MacBook, my favorite apps, and a tutorial on how I customized my Mac OS to fit my aesthetic. My MacBook is the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro in silver. On my desk, I place it in a maple laptop dock and charge and display it to my curved monitor with just a single USB-C cable. To wake up my laptop when it's closed, I just have to click on my trackpad or type on my keyboard. So now I'll be sharing with you what's on my MacBook, my favorite apps, as well as some macOS customization tips. This is what my MacBook screen looks like. Let me first introduce you to my macOS home screen. I like to keep things minimal and pastel. No files or folders on the home screen, just a simple desktop wallpaper, a menu bar on the top of the screen, and a dock with my favorite apps to the left. In terms of light mode versus dark mode, I keep my settings on auto so it changes depending on the time of day, which is really cool. My desktop wallpapers are illustrated by my sister, who is an artist, and she makes these really beautiful illustrations that look gorgeous as my background. They're perfect for some cozy and magical vibes. I'll be sure to link them in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. To the left, I have my dock with all of my most used macOS apps and websites. It's really nice because these are the apps and websites that I use most often, and they're easily accessible with just one click. I used my own custom design app icons for each of the apps to create a minimal and pastel theme. If you're interested in how I did this, stay tuned until the end of the video because I'll be showing you how to add your own custom icons as well as how to add websites to your dock. Also, if you're interested in these app icons that I designed, I'll include links and more info about them in the description below. For dock settings, I like to add the magnification effect so the icons magnify when you hover over them. It's a really pretty and satisfying effect. If I swipe my trackpad to the left, it brings out the widgets panel on the right side of my screen. My widgets are very basic and standard because I have yet to find really practical widgets for macOS. So if you know some really good ones, be sure to share in the comments below and I'd love to check them out. Lastly, my screensaver is pretty cool. I used the Hello screensaver that Apple included in all of the new iMacs. I like how bubbly, pastel, and aesthetic it is, and it has such feel-good vibes. Stay tuned until the end of the video for a tutorial on how to install this as well. So that was an introduction to my setup. Now let me introduce you to some of my favorite apps that I use in my day to day. To start off, I want to introduce you to my VPN of choice, NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. A VPN, or Virtual Private Network, is a tool that helps you secure your internet traffic. In this day and age, when every service that you're using is trying to collect and sell your data, internet privacy is more valuable than ever. NordVPN double encrypts your internet traffic to prevent any prying eyes from getting access to it. This is helpful not only at home, but also in any place with a public Wi-Fi network. NordVPN is also extremely fast thanks to their NordLynx technology, and it's easy to use with the Quick Connect feature. Just one press of a button and you're now protected. So check out the link in my description for more information on how you can sign up for NordVPN, and you can use the code Macy Lee to get a big discount on a two-year plan, plus an extra four months for free. Next, my main productivity app is Notion, where I write my documentations, plan ideas and projects, and include my personal bullet journal slash to-do lists. I actually just released a video on my whole Notion setup, where I walk through how I use my Notion in my day-to-day -day and my professional life, so if you're interested in learning more, check out the video, I'll include it in the cards above. Next up, I like to show you my preferred IDE when coding, which is Visual Studio Code. VS Code has a lot of awesome extensions that improves your coding experience. I'll include a full list of all the extensions that I use in the description below. Let me know if you're interested in a more in-depth video on my VS Code extensions. First, let's talk about my VS Code theme. I use an extension called Pale Night, and it's a really elegant, minimal theme, and it's my favorite out of all the themes that I've explored so far. 
I paired it with another extension which replaces the VS Code icons with icons themed after the video game Stardew Valley. It's super cute and super fun. So that's a tour of my VS Code setup. Let me show you my terminal of choice. I use the app iTerm2 and have configured it to drop down from the top of the monitor whenever I need to use it. The drop down functionality is really helpful because it helps keep my workspace clear. I themed it similarly to my VS Code setup with a purple color scheme. So that wraps up the main apps that I use for coding. Let me introduce you to what I use for mood boarding and designing wireframes and graphic designs on my MacBook. The first app I'd like to share is Milanote. Milano is my favorite mood boarding app as it allows me to plan the mood of the apps that I'm designing, upload reference images to gather my inspiration, and collect all of my thoughts visually. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing how I use Milano to plan the apps that I build and how it's become an integral part of my design and code workflow. The next app I'd like to share is Figma. I do a lot of designing regularly between my professional career as a software engineer and designer and my career as a content creator. Hands down, my favorite feature in Figma is being able to create reusable styles and create what are called Figma components, so you can keep components or any grouping of designs consistent. Let me know if you'd like to learn more about how I use Figma or if you'd like me to go more in depth and share more tips. Finally, the last app I'd like to share with you is my video editing software of choice, Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro is simple, to the point, and has everything I need, and this is what I use to edit all of my YouTube videos. So that wraps up all of my favorite apps that I use in my professional life and for productivity and organization. Now, if you stayed until the end of the video, here is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I added customization to my Mac OS. First up, let me show you how to customize your app icons. It's really easy. So open the custom icon that you want to add in preview and copy that image. Then open the applications folder so you can see the list of applications. When you find the app that you want to customize, right click on it and click on get info. Click on the icon on the top left corner until there is a blue outline around it and paste your icon by hitting command V. Your custom icon should appear and replace the original one. Now you're able to drag this application to your dock and see the custom icon. Something to note is that you have to open the custom icon image in preview first and then copy it. If you try copying it directly from the finder, it won't show properly when you try to customize the icon. Also, something else to note is if you're trying to change the icon of a native Apple app, you have to first duplicate the app by right clicking it and pressing duplicate and then add the custom icon on that duplicated app. Apple doesn't allow you to change the icons of their native apps and this is just the workaround for it. Next up, let me show you how to add your favorite websites to your dock. So for example, I use YouTube all the time, but there's no app for it, but it would be so nice to be able to access it with just one click from my dock. Open your browser and go to the website of choice, then highlight the URL and drag it to your desktop. Click on this new icon on your desktop, right click and hit get info. Then, you can copy and paste your custom icon to represent the website. And then, it's the same step as before, you just drag this icon to your dock, and then there you go! Lastly, let me show you how to add the Hello screensaver. Search with Spotlight Hello.Saver and drag this to your desktop. Change the name of it to Hello Copy.Saver and double click on it to install. If you don't rename it, your Mac will tell you that you already have the screensaver installed. Once installed, you'll see it in your system preferences under desktop and screensaver, and you can toggle on different options. I selected the option soft tones because I really like the pastel color options. This screensaver is super cute and cool, and I really like how you can still access the screensaver even if you don't have the latest iMacs. So that wraps up my MacBook setup. I hope this video was interesting to you and that you learned something new from it. Let me know in the comments below what videos you'd love to see from me next. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.